welcome to Student Short Films. This is our second episode from Confederation College uh, up here in Thunder Bay, Ontario, um, dealing with their Conflicts film program. Tonight's episode is going to be all about costuming, one of the things that is frequently overlooked not only in student films, but in a lot of professional films, too. So we're going to run two shorts that uh, have uh, different but uh, very pronounced costuming styles. Uh, so the first one we're going to run is Trisha Belouz's Dubchuk and Niedemeyer, which uh, Trisha both directed and did costuming for. And after we run the short, Trisha will join us for a conversation on student film costuming. So here's Dubchuk and Niedemeyer. Hey guys, 30 seconds. <laughs> you like the way you look, Cameron? I love the way I look. It's like a sunset. Okay, in five. Hi, welcome back. Before we say goodnight, I'd like to remind all our viewers of the annual Fall Festival Yard Decorating Contest. You're judging, aren't you, Cameron? I am. I am. I can't wait. I Sounds can't exciting. Either. It's gonna be. Well, see you next time. And don't forget your entry forms. Special. Hello there. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, you are a vision in blue. I see you have your registration forms. Good luck. Oh, who needs luck when you've got <laughs> talent? <laughs> Good luck to you too, Jerry. Oh, please, I haven't even mowed my lawn. Oh, well, I'm at the top of my game this year. I've made a mobile fall princess. May the best yard win! Uh -huh. Toodles! <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Uh, Take these. Did you get my princess working? Oh, yeah. It's running real smooth. All right. It's pretty neat. It's pretty clean floor. Let me just... Give me a second. She's watching me. Who? Dubchuk. She knows she's not going to win this year. You're gonna need it. Well, honey, I really think you've outdone yourself this year. Just put that tarp on the display. I don't want the needle monitor to see. You know, she thinks she's gonna win, but not this year. <laughs> not ever. I haven't won four years in a row for nothing, you know, Herb. You know, with little Mickey at Ninja Camp. I've had so much time to work on my most wonderful, dazzling cornucopia display. We need to go over there, Herb. Like right now. Go grab the flashlight. We're gonna do it. Come on. Let's go. She can't pass me. Never. Seriously, Dolores, I need to finish hanging these pictures. Now! Do you hear ABBA? Something outside. 
No, you didn't. You heard of something in your brain. No. No, I did. We are going out to see what that was. Hey, you took my house. Oh, just wear mine! I know I heard something out here. No, it's probably that cat the Thompsons have. No. Oh. I have to know what she's got under that tarp. We're coming with me. Pajama trousers. Oh. Oh. My ankle. Come on, let's go. Just want to get this over. All right. Bernard, do you think that the rain will have ruined our display? I hope not. You made me take four days off of work to build it. Oh, the judges are coming. Get rid of the broom. Oh my God! I'm so excited. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This year, I made a beautiful mobile fall. Princess. Oh, oh, Bernard. Sarah Beth. Oh, your talent is overwhelming. I can't even believe it. It's just so beautiful. Oh my god. Real robot. It's so wonderful. Bernard, she's burning. Oh my god. never have named her. What is that flipping bird? Why didn't you get in the way of that? Maybe enough. Yeah. I'm the star. Oh my god. Oh yeah. We're gonna win. We got this one. <laughs> well now that we've gone through that little episode, can we uh, see what's under the tarp, Mrs. Dubchek? Of course. Come on, her. like a penis. Oh my god, yes. Herb! Herb! The charm! The needle my eyes. You know what? I think we're done. You! You win. Me? I won? I won! I used pumpkins and cats! I won! Work. Congratulations. Oh, you you sabotaged my princess! Oh, no. oh, you're so angry. Oh, oh, you're so angry. Don't even do that. It's yours. You are so good. Oh, you are so You sweet. cannot have my crown! Yes, I'm going to have your crown. Well, that was quite the uh, contest, eh, Cameron? It <laughs> can we can we do you think we can say I that that bird again? That again? I think that was programming to invite you. But what a penis. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Overwhelming. Oh my god, it looks like a penis! <laughs> oh. 
Stoop check. And welcome back. And we are very fortunate to have Trisha Belouz here to tell us all about costuming and, um, and directing too, since she also directed it. So tell us, how did you get into costuming? Well, costuming is just being in the film industry alone. When you're coming up with a film idea, costumes are something that's really important and, like you said, very overlooked, especially from a student perspective. Um, the costumes in a, in a film are not only define when the film is taking place, but the society they're living in and uh, the period of time they're living in. So when I started writing uh, short films, I really took this into consideration when doing character development. What would these people be wearing? And I found I just really, really enjoyed it. So I started to pursue costume design. So the, um, the costuming in uh, Dubchuk and Needlemeyer is very, is very um, primary color, very rich, very vivid. Uh, unfortunately, we have no way of showing our viewers it in film, where it looks better, but it still looks darn good in, in, uh, in video. Um, is, is that your signature style, or was that just something you did particularly for that, that film? I'd say it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of my own little personal touch on each character and what I wanted these characters' costumes to reflect, I wanted them to come off as being quite quirky and, you know, a little bit outdated and you're not really quite sure what time period this is going on and I wanted them to come off as being eccentric and just, you know, to the general eye you would look at them and be like, oh well, God, that's such a tacky, tacky hat or tacky, but they felt they were just the state-of-the-art fashion and I thought it really helped identify the character and what types of people these people were just very quirky and not uh, not very fashion forward <laughs> for sure <laughs> so did you um, make each costume for from uh, scratch or was it something that you like, no picked out I the picked them out I went to the thrift shop and <laughs> I was shocked that I found these 60s style vibrant dresses I swear they were waiting there for me because <laughs> I I don't know who else would have wanted them but when I saw them I just knew that was mrs. Needlemeyer and there was one in blue and purple, so I grabbed her both. And um, so, yeah, you can find some amazing costumes at the thrift store. You know, it's just, it really increases the production value of your film, and it increases the believability. When you're watching a character that's not dressed appropriate, that takes away from the film. You know, the, the director's vision, it's, it's, you know, it's misinterpreted because the character doesn't reflect that vision so say you have a homeless person and they're wearing designer jeans well you know the audience member is going to kind of step back and say I, I don't believe this and probably not watch your film because that you've lost them so costumes are so important and so overlooked and when you're developing your characters think of what they would wear because it really reflects who they are and it can really you know without dialogue we we look at people and we judge them almost immediately, and that's just human nature. So when you want a character to come through, really, you know, put, put the thought into what that person would be wearing, because I think it'll really increase the production value of your student film. So, um, let's see, how to phrase this question. A, a costumer who also directs, do you think you direct differently um, to more take in the costumes? I think it affects directing because I want the actor not only to reflect their personality in their clothes but in their personality. So when I'm seeing what they're wearing it, it helps determine what type of person they are and when, when we're doing lines and when you're going over the script it almost changes what they might say. You might think you know what they're not going to say that. That doesn't reflect that just by looking at the character you know, your dialogue could change. So that affects directing a little bit. When you, you see them all there and they're, they're your character inside and out, you kind of change your mind a few times about what they would say. So I think it affects the directing a little bit to have the strong connection to both. 
-hmm. And mannerisms, you know, it, oh, it's, it's such a package. You know, everything in film is a package. And if you can put all the, you know, great pieces together by looking at those fine details that could be overlooked, um, it'll just make your film so much better. What advice would you have for a student filmmaker who knows nothing about costume, mm -hmm. um, understands that costume is important, and maybe does not have access to somebody who has that skill? Are there any tips you could give them to kind of overcome that? Well, if you, of course, the internet is our best resource. And when you're thinking of a, a type of character, like say you're doing a period piece, well, of course, do the research and see what they look like. But if you're just doing general everyday costumes, think of someone you know that is kind of like the character, or you can relate to the character and see how they dress and what that personality, you know, how people with that kind of personality will dress. And it, it could, it'll give you an idea of, if, you know, what will make your character look best and bring out that personality the best. And just watch other movies. Watch other movies and see the emphasis that's, in feature films, emphasis is really put on costumes. And that Are there any feature films that you can Recommend? Uh, my favorite feature films for costumes was Marie Antoinette. And it was oh. a, pr a picture with Kirsten Dunst, and it was a period piece. And the costumes, if you look at the costumes, the fine detail that went into designing those dresses and those men's suits, I just, I loved it. That's what made me really start to look at costumes in film. Was that movie? Okay, here's a question. Um, as we're taping this, the Academy Awards were just last night. Do you think that uh, the winner for Best Costume, which was Alice in Wonderland, I believe, do you think that one deserved it, or do you think it should have gone to one of the other four? Well, with Alice in Wonderland being a specific type of movie, it's a fantasy, there's lots of character, plus it's bringing over an old tradition, like Alice has been made so many times, Tim Burton put his spin with his costumes, and yeah, I think I'm a huge Tim Burton fan, so yes, I think uh, it was very deserving, because there's a lot of work that goes into all that fine detail, and taking the old Alice in Wonderland and bringing it into modern, kind of a Tim Burton feel, I think it w they were very well done. And um, not to, not to uh, divert away from student films uh, any more than necessary, but um, one of the nominees was the costuming for True Grit. And I've, I remember reading that uh, a lot of people thought that although that was great costuming, it really didn't have a chance because it was so drab and, and, and realistic for, mm -hmm. for that time period. Um, do you think uh, films that, that do costuming like that have a chance against they other sh things? They should, because it, there's a lot of effort that goes into making that production look like that time. Mm -hmm. Like the costume designer would have had to really research and d to see what they would be wearing during this time and what would be appropriate and what wouldn't. So I would say that it should be considered whether or not it does, I'm not sure. Yeah. We'll let the Academy decide. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely think they, when you watch a film, watch what they're wearing and watch the you know, intricate detail that goes into an accessory or a tie, or there's a lot of thought that goes into uh, that small, small piece, this pair of earrings, just to bring out the, uh, like, bring out the essence of that character. Okay, and a quick general film question. Uh, I noticed from uh, Dupchuk and Needlemeyer that you shot on a suburban street mm -hmm. uh, between two groups of houses. Did you actually shut down that street for your production? We or did. We ah. shot down the street. I tried to get a, a legal clo road closure, but I was too late. So <laughs> we, us students, took it upon ourselves to close the road, and we had no complaints, and the shoot went smooth for two days, and I just went door to door and informed my neighbors. but. No, we kind of snuck that in there. Oh, so that's your neighborhood? Yeah. Oh, okay, Yeah, that's okay. my neighborhood. That was my house <laughs> and my two neighbors on either side. So, yeah, we just kind of took over the neighborhood and they, they didn't say anything. So we got lucky. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming in and talking to us about costume. And we certainly enjoyed watching Dupe, Chuck and Needlemeyer. And now we're going to check out another costume-focused um, film. The costuming is very different because this film takes place in a sort of surreal dreamland where you want the costumes to be unusual, different, but um, still somewhat attached to reality. So next we're going to check out Perfect. And going with the girl power theme, uh, this film also features strong female characters and was uh, directed by Angela Torcheri. And uh, the costumes in it were done by Tish Chambers. So here's Perfect. Sperio.
Wake up. There's no one here, girls. Oh, guys, God. What is, she's, what's she still she's doing still here? here? She's like, what, what's so going nervous. on? Why are you? No, told you get lost. <laughs> Why are you just looking at me like that? You open your ears. I need you. To, what's what's this guy talking to you? What? Okay, Why don't be stepping up. Step up. up. <laughs> Wake up. Are you sleeping? Why don't you wake up? If I were awake, I would be dead. I, I don't understand. That is why you are sleeping. <laughs> wake up. She's like, staring at us. She's like, he's going on. He's taking off. Wake up, 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 wake up. All right, now we're going to check out uh, Trisha in front of the camera. Believe it or not, <laughs> she doesn't just live behind the camera. So we've got a quick little promotional video for the Conflicts film program here at Confederation College where she is interviewed. So check this out and uh, we'll be back in a sec. Hi, my name is Trisha Belouz and I am a recent graduate of the Confederation College film program. Directing is my passion, my love. I love to direct and to have the opportunity to come to direct fulfilled a great dream of mine and it was also so much fun. I really love it. 
When you're in the film program, you see we work so many long hours together. We spend evenings and weekends, and you develop a real close bond with your classmates. And we've become such great friends, more than friends. We rely on each other. We work with each other. We've been there for each other for the last two years, and I'm going to miss everybody so much. And you do develop a really tight bond with your fellow students. Confederation College film program has been the best decision of my life. I had so much fun. I've met so many people and the training in itself is so hands-on and we get such one-on-one -on -one with our teachers and I'm not quite sure if that's at all colleges and universities but I feel here we were really treated very well and anytime we needed anything we the teachers were there for us.